Guys, here we are on the red back stand. I've got Danny Green with me back for the third year running. Danny, thanks for coming down again. You love this expo, don't you? Oh, I'm, once again, I'm blown away, mate. The amount of people that come here, and yeah, it's, it's wild. and. It's great. I've been walking around taking photos of some good ideas and, you know, getting some tips for myself, so it's a great event. Mate, when did you get in? All the way from Perth? Yeah, flew in last night, so uh, late flight, and then uh, bed was a bit different. Bed was a bit stiff, so I didn't get much of a sleep, but uh, I'm here today and here tomorrow, and, uh, yeah, look, there's just so many, so many things to see here. It really is a phenomenal expo. Mate, I've got to ask you, you've had the destructive um, beatdown, if you like, of Shane Cameron earlier last, uh, late last year it was. Great victory there. What's on the cards moving forward here? You know, there's a bit of murmuring that you may be, you may be all done, but you're still looking sharp, I see. Oh, I've got to keep the eye in, mate. My daughter's 11 and she's going to be, you know, the, the boy's been knocking on the door in about a couple of years' time, so I want to keep in shape, chase those little buggers around the block. But, yeah. uh, look, mate, I'm not too sure. Not many fighters get the chance to script their own ending. And for me to get knocked out a couple of times, lose my world title, then for the chance to fight for my old, old world title, get it back in a pretty torrid fight in 12 rounds at a packed house in Melbourne, the, I guess the, uh, you know, the, the sport-loving centre of Australia. Uh, yeah, pretty happy and who knows, mate, it's a, it's a tough gig. I've been doing it for a long time. Might be a nice way to fly off out in the sunset as a world champion and do what not many fighters, you know, I guess uh, have the fortitude to do. I, I, if I do not fight again, I'll be pulling stumps before I'm ready which is hard for a fighter and a competitive guy to do. But 20 years down the track, I reckon I'll look back, if I do make that decision, as a good one. But look, anything could happen. I never say never. I've learned to never say never. And if something massive comes along, who knows, I might take the opportunity. But to defend my world title against a top 10 guy who's not, gonna, not a massive name, I've fought the massive names. I've beaten them. I've lost against them. I've done all I can, really, in the sport, for me personally. Uh, it'd want to be something pretty special to go again, so I guess I'll, uh, I'll have to wait for that decision uh, before I make it. Describe to us the feeling when you've brought out, you know, who many considered at the time, you know, one of the best of all time in Roy Jones Jr. You've brought him in our house in Sydney, in front of a packed house, millions watch it on TV, you finished him in the first round. <laughs> Mate, I was very, very, very confident that I was going to be victorious. It was probably the most relaxed I've ever been. I watched the replay not long ago, and the referee says to me, you're ready to go, like he taps you the groin, you gotta make sure you that, checks your mouth guard, and like a minute before the fight's gonna start. And I just, I just smile and go, yeah, I'm ready to rumble, man. I was cool as, and not being arrogant, I was just yeah. prepared so well, and, yeah. and, and was very confident, had very strong self-belief. Sometimes I haven't had that self-belief and I haven't been victorious. Mm -hmm. So it's very important, and uh, I thought in my mind I'd win, I'd win in the 11th round, mm -hmm. but I never said it. Mm -hmm. But uh, if I catch anyone, mm -hmm. Cold, like you know, clean and cold, like he was Roy. He was in great trouble, and I jumped on him and, and didn't give him a chance. Ref called off, and he was there was only one way it's going to finish, mm. and that's Roy out cold. Mm. So uh, for me, that was the greatest victory that I've had in my career. I, I think for anyone, I mean, you talk yeah. about a highlight as a boxer knocking out Roy Jones Jr. It doesn't get better, does it? Yeah, no, and I was five to one underdog when the bell yeah. went. Yeah. And then he went and fought Bernard Hopkins. He'd already signed on to fight Bernard Hopkins. He was just, I was a mere formality, like a, a turn up for Hopkins for him in his eyes, and uh, he'd, he'd already signed on, and then they fought, Hopkins fought him later. In the next fight after me, he still went and fought Bernard Hopkins, when I should have fought Hopkins. Yeah. And uh, they went 12 rounds. So I put Roy away, Roy away in one, and Bernard went 12 with him, and you know, it would have been nice to, to see if I could have done the same, or, or been victorious against a legend in Bernard Hopkins, but unfortunately never got the chance to do it, we tried. Well, I mean, is that still a potential foe for you? I mean, is he still going around, I know he's just won another belt, or is it just too hard? Oh, look, man, uh, I was on the phone with Bernard directly after the Roy Jones fight for hours and said, you can't fight Roy, you got to fight me, it doesn't make sense. You've signed on, but why would you fight a guy who just smoked him one round? Mm. It doesn't make sense, you got to fight me next. Yeah, yeah. Maybe fight Roy after that. Yeah. And we we're, we're, were doing the deal, I had the money, I had everything on the table over yeah. in Los Angeles in Golden Boy's office. Richard Schaefer was, 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 was there, I was talking to Richard Schaefer, and, yeah. and the other guy present was, was Schaefer's lawyer for Golden Boy. And we had the deal pretty much done, then he just ceased negotiations. Yep. Unfortunately, he chose to fight Roy Jones instead. Yep. It, was a, it was a stink. Yeah. And uh, a pretty boring fight, but he won. And then he's gone on to do some ridiculously incredible things in the sport. But Hopkins is one of a kind. There's only one guy. He's 48. You can't, I don't know, there's only, there's only one person in the world that can do that. No, that's it's right. him. So, yeah. uh, look, I got an immense amount of respect for the guy as far as his ability and what he's done in the sport and the way he conducts himself and handles himself physically and mentally outside the sport as well as inside. Yeah. So it would have been nice, but look, man, he's 48 years old and the money he was, he's going to command to come out here to Australia. Yeah. 
is going to be ridiculous and it's way too much for what he's really worth. Yeah. And then for me to go there, yeah. he's not going to he's not going to be able to offer me the amount of yeah. money that, that I'm worth to go there. So, yeah. you know, I don't think it'll happen. And uh, yeah. if he, if he's or if he's less greedy and yeah. accepts what he's worth, yeah. then who knows? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'll tell you what, mate. When you're a kid over there in WA, just running around like a little grasshopper, but you know. The career you've had, you couldn't ask for much more. You know, it's just been amazing, mate, hasn't it? You've done your country proud, yeah? Uh, thanks very much, mate. And uh, look, I'm, yeah, I pinch myself. Yeah. I pinch myself, you know. I would have thought I would have been one of the guys, you know, one of the young blokes walking around today, not dreaming of, of, of being able to achieve what I've achieved. And I guess it comes down to, I guess, sacrifice and self belief and, and a very strong will to win. And hasn't always gone my way. And I had someone early on in my career very prominent person in the sport say you, you won't make it you yeah. know before I turn pro he's too yeah. slow or he won't make it and I was very very uh, very determined to, yeah. to prove myself yeah. and my country that I have the ability and, yeah. and I, it's the most the most satisfying thing champ is the following and the support that I've had has been yeah. has been crazy yeah. and what's the hardest thing about staying at the top of your game you know the very best like you have for you know almost two decades you know is it the mental side or is it the physical component just touch on that for us it's probably a bit of both, man. I think mentally you have to be far stronger than the average Joe to be able to achieve that kind of success and to be able to achieve the things that a fighter can achieve because you're physically up against it. It's such a such a tough game physically, so your, your body's under duress the whole time. So the amount of injuries you carry, I've fought with broken ribs, broken nose, broken jaw, broken hand, prepared five or six weeks with all those breaks in my body at different times through various fights. So you've got to have a very strong uh, will, to either, will to win and a, a very uh, a, bit of, a few screws loose always helps. That's probably the main thing, mate. Well, mate, I follow you on Facebook. You certainly do have a few screws loose, <laughs> don't you, mate? You've got to have you've that, been, You've been enjoying a can, actually, just touching on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, been enjoying myself, mate. You know, and I guess... When I look back on it, on a probably look back a bit fonder because I've actually smelt the roses on the way through. Yeah, I've yeah. enjoyed it too, mate. I've had yeah. my fun. I've had it. Yeah. There's no point doing what you do and not being able to enjoy it. Yeah. And you got to live. And yeah. Yeah, anything in, in moderation is good. Yeah. You know, you let yourself go. And I'm just one of the. I'm just a regular Joe, man. I like to yeah. enjoy myself and have as much fun and yeah. be as silly as possible as long as no one's getting hurt and, and yeah. everyone's cool. Yeah. Well, Danny Green, I tell you, mate, you've been an absolute legend. On on behalf of the you know the Australian fitness industry, we'd like to thank you again for for coming along to the show, and we wish you only the best moving yeah. forward, mate. We really do. Thanks very much and everyone out there for the support I've been showing just it blows me away it continually blows me away and pe people show me such you know such love here and I just I'm, I'm, I'm really glad that I can show back and mate thanks very much for having me here once again it's a fantastic show and look forward to being here next year mate thanks Danny Danny's going to be here again tomorrow on the Probiotech stand that's a mouthful with Redback Supplements over here in Hall 2 the strength and conditioning zone come on down thanks Danny thanks mate cheers